Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel if you're tuning in for the first time. My name is Simonai and this is the last episode of Bridges and Connections, the series Bridges and Connections. This is the final episode and consequently the title is Final Destinations. These messages are to the set apart children of Yahuwah. If you consider one who is drawn by him to his word, who is manifest in the name of Yahushua, I'm referencing John 6, If you are one who seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, I consider you my brother, my sister, my family. Let's get into this final segment of Bridges and Connections, which is entitled Final Destinations. My brothers and sisters, End times are here, and not all will be among those gathered before the physical return of Yahushua Mashiach. The time is now to consider the final destinations. Where will you take your last breath? Where will you be? Are your spirits stirring? Is your spirit stirring? saying, move, then move. I can assure you if the Almighty Father is stirring you to move, he is making the provisions for you to move. And I believe the final exodus is a process. There will be smaller groups merging with larger groups into larger groups and even larger groups. It's a process for the gathering of 144,000 and a great multitude as mentioned in Revelation's seventh chapter. It's a process to bring about the fulfillment of our final destinations. Before I get into, before I get started, my brothers and sisters, I want to say this. Please note, this is the last installment of Bridges and Connections. It doesn't mean that I want to stop posting content, but for Bridges and Connection, this is the last installment. You're invited to continue with me as I begin the next series that will shortly come after this. Now, let us unpack the words final destinations, my brothers and sisters. Be believe it or not, these two words will have a different impact on different people. What do I mean by that, Yasharal? Some of us, our final destination will be in the city where we are right now. The state we are at right now. The country we are right now. Some of our final destination will be on a highway. Maybe in a plane. Or on a train. Or in a car accident. You see, when we face physical death, only the Almighty Father knows. I lean on Deuteronomy 8.3 every day, which says, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Almighty Father. I encourage each of us to have discussions centered around the words final destinations. Consider if you knew your last word spoken to any individual represented your final message. Have you given thought to that? Look at the final destinations as the possibility of being a time to say our last goodbyes. Do we speak of our last goodbyes to brothers and sisters. Do we speak of what would we say if we walk in that last few steps of life? It's time to give that some thought, some prayer. Not worry, some thought. Say to those loved ones what you would want to say if you knew it was your last words. And have them pack it in their parking lot that state of mind to remember what you said to them. Let's visit. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1 and 2 says, As the coming of our Master Yahushua Messiah and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to become easily unsettled in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as if the day of Yahuwah has come. There's more. He goes on to say, let no one deceive you in any way. I'm in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, and I'm reading from the scripture. 2009, my sword. It says, let no one deceive you in any way because the falling away is to come first. And the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that he is called the Almighty One or that is worship, so that he sits as the Almighty One in the dwelling place of the Almighty One, showing himself that he is the Almighty One. This is talking about the anti-Messiah, my brothers and sisters. But I wanted to bring your attention to the words that there will be a falling away. Third verse in Second Thessalonians said, because the falling away is to come first. I encourage you to begin asking yourself, what do these passages mean? In other words, what would the characteristics resemble regarding people falling away? Is it that brother, that sister that you least expected because of unbelieving, falling away? What say you, my brothers and sisters, have you given thought to this final destination in life? Let us also visit Matthew chapter 24, 8 and 9. Notice it says, and all these are the beginnings of birth pains, and then they shall deliver you up to affliction and kill you and shall be hate and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. My brothers and sisters, this speaks of the literal you who should speak into his taught ones. But know this, O Yasharal, it applies to these final days where many who are drawn by the Almighty Father will be martyrs for Yahushua's name. It goes beyond the literal during that specific time. Yashara, Yashara, it goes on to say in Matthew 24, 10 through 12, and then many shall stumble, they shall deliver you up, they shall deliver up one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise up and lead many astray. And because of the increase in lawlessness, the love of many shall become cold. You see, so our final destination will differ among us. Prepare to witness the realities of what I just presented. All too often we glaze over the scriptures, ignoring the need to seek to discern and understand what is expected of us. That will soon change, O Yasharal. Each of us will face physical death in Abba Yahuwah's time. Sure, there will be the exception of those physically alive upon the physical return of Yahushua and the transformation that is to come. Our final day and destination will end with our contributions to lifting up the Almighty Yahuwah through his word, Yahushua. Remember John 12, 32 lets us know by lifting up Yahushua, it is he who will draw us together my brothers and sisters. Are you prepared to witness such? Consider these words, for so many undiscerning and unlearned teachers prefer to sugarcoat end time prophecies. Come with me as I take you to these words in Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 45 reads this, my brothers and sisters. You heard that it was said you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I said to you, love your enemies, bless those cursing you, do good to those hating you, and pray for those insulting you and persecuting you, so that you become sons of your Father in the heavens, because he makes his son rise on the wicked 
and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. You see, there are teachers unlearned and undiscerning that will have us believe everything is going to be all right. You're not going to face any hardships, any pain, any suffering. They are lying, my brothers and sisters. Will everything be all right? Sure, this is the plan of the Almighty Father. And these earthen vessels will return back to the dirt. What's important is that inward man. And yes, it is important that we demonstrate the strength to reflect set apartness while in these earthen vessels, obeying his laws and statutes. Ten Commandments, recognizing his living voice, obeying his guidance. Matthew 5, 46 to 48. Again, I'm in the scripture 2009 version of my sword. It says, for if you love those loving you, what reward have you? Are the tax collectors not doing the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what do you do more than others? Are the tax collectors not doing so too? Therefore, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. You see, my brothers and sisters, it say be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. When we read the scripture that says Yahuwah hates Esau or Edom, when we read in Ecclesiastes there's a time and season for everything, we'll see that there will be a time and season to hate to love, to live, to share, to walk away. You see, sometimes, my brothers and sisters, the babe, the newly awakened, coming out of bad habits, may find help from us because we show them love. We hated what they were doing, the lifestyle that they had, but we showed love and that encouraged them to come into correction. You see, so it's not saying just love every and anybody. We must learn the life in the scripture so that we know what they mean, what they mean to us and when they apply. There will be surprising times when we discover someone drawn by Abba Yahuwah to us, the person who was once our enemy is disciplined and brought into fellowship with the obedience. It is by walking in the spirit, my brothers and sisters, discerning the living words, then we can understand what the passage mean when it talks about hate and love. Do good to those that curse you. You see, out of love, we can be used as a beacon of light to bring someone into discipline, into correction, and set apartness. Regarding the final exodus, I am compelled to believe the final destinations will be centered around the true Mount Sinai. The true Mount Sinai is currently known as Jabal al -Laws, located in the northwestern quadrant of what is known as Saudi Arabia. I am also compelled to believe this area is within the borders of the promised land. I believe that there will be some among us that will witness that our final destination will include individuals that once hated us, once cursed us, once persecuted us, that came into the light, just as Shaul came, or Paul came into the light. By our love and demonstration, according to the way the Almighty Father directed will participate in that final destination, that final place centered around Jabal our laws. Let me continue. Beware, O Yashra, there are those who would have you believe the promised land is South Saharan Africa. It is my belief that Misraim represents any place of bondage. So any place outside where Yahuwah has promised us and want us to be is a land of bondage, and we will discover that. It is also my belief that if we go anywhere other than the true promised land, we will witness bondage and destruction like never imagined. 
Let me share with you something that supports my warning not to go into South Saharan Africa thinking that that is the promised land. Not to go anywhere in the continent thinking that's the promised land. Come with me, Yasharal. Please be mindful of what I present regarding my warnings in the promised land. It will make a difference. For some will get on the wrong transportation, going to the wrong place at the wrong time. Come with me to Genesis 26 chapter, verses 1 and 2. And remember, Yahuwah doesn't change. Things that happen in times past, similar things will happen again. Consider Genesis 26, 1 and 2. It reads, and there was a scarcity of food in the land besides the first scarcity of food, which was in the days of Abraham and Yisak, went to Abimelech, sovereign of the Philistines in Gerar. Now listen here. Genesis 26, 2 says, and Yahuwah appeared to him and said, do not go down to Mithraim. Live in the land which I command you. Which I command you. Do not go into Mithraim, my brothers and sisters. The land of bondage. You see, the continent was not, the whole continent was not promised to us. It goes on to say, Sojourn in this land, and I shall be with you and bless you. For I give all these lands to you and your seed, and I shall establish the oath which I swore to Abraham to your father. I shall increase your seed like the stars of the heaven, and I shall give all these lands to your seed. And your seed, all the nations of the earth, shall be blessed. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and guarded my charge, my commands, my laws, my Torah. You see, my brothers and sisters, it is emphasized where we're supposed to be, where we're supposed to go, what land is promised to us. Many people don't realize that the promised land spans multiple countries. Many people don't realize that the world despises us because we're the only people on this planet that the Almighty Father Yahuwah has given and promised land to. for certain specific purposes regarding his sovereignty, his kingdom. There are those who despise us because of that. Do not go outside of the promised land. We are there now. Some say Babylon. I believe mystery Babylon is everywhere outside the promised land. It's wicked and creates Bondage for the set-apart children of Yahuwah. And I believe when we return to the promised land from the borders of the Euphrates to the great Nile, we will see that land flourish. There are some people that will say there's no way that the promised land is over there and I'm not talking about that little piece of land called Israel by itself. That piece of land is part of the great promised land from the Euphrates to the great Nile. And if Africa, the total continent of Africa included what is now known as the Middle East, and if the map has been incorrect, and the continent of Africa, including the Middle East, which was once part of Northeast Africa, it's the largest continent on the planet, but we've been deceived. How do we know the size of the promised land, truthfully speaking? Because some think that Yashara, when we gather, cannot be between the Euphrates and the Great Nile. And some think we say in the promised land is that little sliver of land that is called Israel to this day. 
I say to you, my brother, my sister, and my family, prepare, prepare to witness the true borders of the promised land emerge. Prepare to witness why the Almighty Father is telling us do not go into the land of bondage. Pay close attention. Let me share another passage with you, my brothers and sisters. Jeremiah 44, I'm going to start with 12, and there's more to it. It says, And I shall take the remnant of Yehuda who have set their face to go into the land of Mitzrayim to serve on there, and they shall all be consumed in the land of Mitzrayim, fall by the sword, consumed by scarcity of food. From the least to the greatest, they shall die by the sword and by scarcity of food. And they shall be an oath and an astonishment and a curse and a reproach. It continues on. This is for people who choose to ignore what I'm saying and go outside the promised land instead of going to the promised land once the final exodus is in motion and mass. He goes on to say in Jeremiah 44, 13 and 14, And I shall punish those dwelling in the land of Mithraim as I have punished Jerusalem by the sword, by scarcity of food, by pestilence. And none of the remnant of Yehuda who have gone into the land of Mithraim, I believe it's saying the land of bondage. I believe it's saying in the land which is controlled by mystery Babylon, which means all the wicked lands outside the promised land. We will see want to keep us in bondage. He says, those who have gone into the land of Mithraim to sojourn there shall escape or survive. It say, and none of the remnant of Yehuda who have gone into the land of Mithraim to sojourn there shall escape or survive. Least, lest they return to the land of Yehuda, to which they are longing to return to dwell there. For they shall not return except those who escape. Yashara, O oh Yashara, the time is now to begin to seek to discern where is the promised land. We have entered into a critical time, my brothers and sisters. We have entered into critical times when we will witness our final destinations. It will differ for many of us. Let us pray earnestly to be able to endure until the end, my brothers and sisters. Look around. People are beginning to die at an alarming rate. They are facing their final destination. From infants to seniors, much is occurring. It's time, my brothers and sisters. It's time to discuss what our final destinations resemble and how we will conduct ourselves before reaching the throne of Yahushua. Choose wisely, my brothers and sisters, for if we do not know the day, we will take our last breath. That's not stopping us from telling someone, if today was my last breath, I thank Yahushua for the life that I had. That's not stopping someone from saying, if today is my last day, if my final destination is here in my home, my apartment, my car, on the road, in a plane, on a train, wherever our feet. It's not stopping us, I'm saying, right now. To a loved one, I love you. Life has been good. It has had, it has had its struggle. But the choice I made to pursue the will of the Almighty Father Yahuwah, to recognize that his word was manifest in Yahushua's name, to recognize that he sent his set-apart spirit in Yahushua's name to guide and direct my footsteps. Has it been a battle? Yes. So if I did not wake up in the morning, or if I should die in an instant, nothing stopped me from saying what I just said. Let us start having these discussions. For with the final exodus will come much pain and regret for those left behind. For those 
who may even be obstacles and find themselves removed by the hand of the Almighty Father. It's time now, my brothers and sisters, to stop thinking that we can physically live forever. Spiritually, we will. The question is, are you taking these words serious, my brothers and sisters? Are you prepared to step into that final destination and work? You see, the final exodus is not going to come with just going and sitting down, being slowful and lazy. There will be work. There will be things to do as we witness reaching that final destination and awaiting the physical return of Yahushua. Yashara, oh Yashara, as I stated, this is the last installment of Bridges and Connections. I want you to stay tuned for the next series. May shake many people. May cause many people to stop listening to the words I present. But let me ask you this, Yashara. In all that your mind, body, and soul have experienced, and all your being, what have you grown to expect in the coming days? What do you think it takes for someone to love you, to hold onto your hand, to die for you? Are the brothers you're in fellowship with, the sisters you're in fellowship, will they really lay their life down for you? Do they really love you? Do you really love them? It is my position, my brothers and sisters, that in order to love one another, we must love the Almighty Father. We must love that His Word, Yahushua, was manifest, that His Spirit is sent in Yahushua's name to teach us, to guide us, to comfort us, to reveal things to us that are necessary, where we can face those final destinations with joy, with comfort. Prepare to witness all that is necessary, my brothers and sisters, to complete what is expected of the one in the mirror. Prepare. Have these serious discussions. By doing so, some may take a different posture, a different attitude and behavior towards this day-to-day -day walk and set of partners. Enough said for now, my brother, my sister, my family. Be encouraged. Rise up. Be strengthened. And let us pursue set of partners. More so, let us begin to discern why we need to start physically moving closer to one another and witness the ways and means that the Almighty Father will lay out for this to happen. It has occurred for some, for many, and it will occur for others. For the final de destination will prove that in the wake, and what's happening behind us will be as a closing scroll, moving habitable places, forcing man to come closer to one another. Pray and watch, O Yashara. There's a lot of work ahead. There's a lot of things to do. I welcome your questions, your comments. Let us engage. If not me, with whom? If not with whom? You see, the Almighty Father is calling out. It's time to rise up and discover how bridges and connections brings the attention to what do we need to cross over to one another in unity and set of partners. If I said anything that encouraged you or stir your spirit towards the Almighty Father, consider subscribing, share, like, Let's utilize the algorithm while we can to share brothers and sisters who are speaking words of encouragement or words that may just indeed prove to be coming from the Almighty Father. On that note, my brothers and sisters, that all, that's all I have for now. But be encouraged. Thanks for your patience, your tolerance. I pray that you, that we, grow in discerning the voice of the Almighty Father began to respond more expeditiously. On that note, I say to you, my brother, my sister, my family, Shalom.